Welcome to the special edition of Hannity, President Trump versus the Swamp. Now, the title is fitting because, yes, we are broadcasting tonight from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Well, swamp, sewer, same thing. Now, we are following three major breaking stories tonight. Massive new developments in the Clinton bought and paid for and phony fake news Russian propaganda dossier that was used by the Obama administration to spy on members of the Trump campaign. Ed Henry reporting at this hour that House Intelligence Chairman Devin Nunes, he told his Republican colleagues this week in two closed-door meetings that he has seen evidence of abuse of government surveillance programs by the FBI and by the Department of Justice and their officials. Plus, the president is accusing FBI agent Peter Strzok of treason over anti-Trump text messages that he sent to his FBI lawyer mistress, Lisa Page. And you will not believe what a longtime Hillary Clinton ally is saying about this explosive scandal. And tonight, Judicial Watch is scoring yet another major victory. The State Department is being told to speed up the release of Hillary Clinton's emails. How about some urgency? That's good for once. Also, Barack Obama, he cannot quit his habit. He is lashing out and attacking again the Fox News Channel. Newt Gingrich is here tonight to discuss and respond. But first, there is a lot to cover in tonight's breaking news opening monologue. We're glad you're with us. All right, massive breaking news this hour about the Clinton bought and paid for fake news Russian propaganda dossier that, of course, was used by the Obama administration to obtain FISA warrants to surveil members of the Trump campaign and then the president-elect. Our own Ed Henry is reporting that in two closed-door meetings this week, House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes, that he told Republican lawmakers that he has seen evidence show, showing clear abuse of government surveillance programs by the FBI and Department of Justice officials. Ed Henry is also reporting that Nunes told his colleagues that he plans to share evidence of this abuse with the entire House later this month. Now, this is a major development, but as we've been saying, there is so much more information that needs to come out, and it will, because I'm telling you, this is the beginning of a massive historic scandal. It's unfolding unlike anything this country has ever seen before. This is going to reach the very highest levels of your government, including the DOJ, the FBI, the intel community. Sarah Carter tonight reporting, and we have confirmed this with our sources, that as soon as next week, examples of systemic FISA abuses will in fact be revealed. Any unbiased so-called journalists, well, they should be able to see this as the major story it is, worthy of further investigation. But is the media in this country so abusively biased and so anti-Trump that they can no longer care about simple, basic, fundamental truth, our Constitution, our freedoms, our liberties? Does the media not care about any of this? The media, as we have been pointing out nightly, is so bad at this point in time in history and so radically left in their ideology that in fact, sadly, truth, facts, they don't get through to them. The only thing that seems to matter is destroying and delegitimizing President Trump. That has been their only objective for over a year, and you see it happening day after day, hour after hour. It's pretty disgusting, it's pathetic, it's a disservice, it's disgraceful to you, the American people. But it's why we're going to keep asking the tough questions here on this program, and we'll keep getting information that the American people, all of you, deserve to know. Now, also tonight, the president is eviscerating FBI agent Peter Strzok and his FBI lawyer mistress, Lisa Page, over their anti-Trump text messages. Now, the president is telling the Wall Street Journal, quote, a man is tweeting to his lover that if she loses, we'll essentially go back to the, we'll go back to the insurance policy, which is they lose, we'll go to phase two, and we'll get this guy out of office. I mean, this is the FBI we're talking about. I think that is, you know, that is treason. See, that's treason right there. And the president added, that's a treasonous act. What he tweeted to his lover is treasonous. Now, here's the insurance policy text message President Trump is referring to Strzok writing his mistress. I want to believe the path you threw out for consideration in Andy's office that there's no way he gets elected. But I'm afraid we can't take that risk. It's like an insurance policy in the unlikely event you die before you're 40. Now, we here at Fox News and on this show, we believe, we haven't confirmed yet, the Andy mentioned in that text is the deputy FBI director, Andrew McCabe. Now, that message, it's only the beginning of this massive scandal. Stay with us here. It gets complicated. Now, Strzok and Page also called Trump an idiot, a lonesome human, and said, F Trump and congressional investigators. They're working to determine if these Trump-hating FBI lovers 
were leaking information about the Russia investigation to the press after a new round of their text messages were released. By the way, there's about 9,000 more to go. And Strzok also sat in on Hillary Clinton's FBI interview for the email investigation after he and James Comey exonerated her or began writing the exoneration letter before the investigation, and it was Strzok that signed the original documents kicking off the Russia investigation. This guy's corrupt tentacles touch seemingly everything, also in General Flynn. Now, what Strzok has done here, it is crooked. It is scandalous. And that even former Clinton strategist Mark Penn is saying he should be fired. Here's what Penn said on the Fox Business Network. Take a look. I think that tweet is one of the most damaging things I've ever seen from someone in the government at every level. I don't understand how he's still employed by the FBI. I don't understand how a criminal investigation hasn't been opened to all of this. To me, that is hugely damaging to confidence in the FBI. These two folks were having an affair, using official government channels for their personal communications. That alone would have got, made them a security threat. Kind of refreshing. That was a Democrat. Being honest, for once. Now, there are reportedly 10,000 total messages between Strzok and Page. We've only gotten a fraction of them. Now, that scandal is only going to get bigger. Now, in addition to his comments about Peter Strzok to the Wall Street Journal, President Trump is also taking aim at Congressman Adam Schiff, the ranking Democrat on the House Intel Committee, by saying, quote, he left meetings where people are being interviewed, and then all of a sudden they say a story about what's going on inside the meetings. Well, it's probably illegal what he's doing, but the Democrats. Well, they know it's a hoax, an excuse for them having lost the election. Now, while it's unclear if Schiff has been leaking, we know for a fact that another top-ranking Democrat has been leaking. President Trump is continuing to slam who he's now calling sneaky Senator Dianne Feinstein because she unilaterally released the Fusion GPS testimony before Congress. And Trump tweeted, Democrat Dianne Feinstein should never have released secret committee testimony to the public without authorization. Very disrespectful to committee members and possibly illegal. Now, she blamed her poor decision, by the way, on the fact that she had a cold. I bet in school the dog ate her homework. And while Feinstein's actions are threatening to disrupt the Senate's investigation, releasing the transcript actually provided some very revealing information about Fusion GPS and their founder, Glenn Simpson. Simpson actually testified he never even bothered to verify with the former British spy, Christopher Steele, had actually put in the Russian source phony dossier. He also admitted that he was against Trump during the election. So clearly Simpson was more than happy to take over $10 million from Hillary Clinton and the DNC that she's running and put this dossier together that they then tried to use to influence the American people. Oh, Russian propaganda to influence an election bought and paid for by Hillary. And then a FISA warrant. And finally tonight, Judicial Watch, they're scoring another major legal victory. A federal judge is now ordering the State Department to ramp up the release of Hillary Clinton's email from her time as Secretary of State. And according to Judicial Watch, the FBI discovered 72,000 pages of documents last year that Clinton either tried to delete or did not disclose. You cannot make this stuff up. If I wrote the most obscene spy novel, you couldn't make this up. The author of Trumped Up, How? criminalization of political differences endangers democracy. Harvard constitutional law professor Alan Dershowitz, Fox News contributor Sarah Carter, Judicial Watch president Tom Fitton. Sarah, because you have been on the forefront this week, we now know that the dossier bought and paid for by Hillary with salacious lies was used to get a FISA warrant against well, yes, we now know that it was either in part used or it was a significant part of the FBI being able to get the warrant to spy on Trump and people within his campaign. But, Sean, when you're looking at the dossier, and I think actually leaking uh, Glenn Simpson's testimony actually backfired on the Agreed. Democrats. I mean, it really did. You look at that testimony, you see to yourself, first, Glenn Simpson said there was a source inside the Trump campaign. That's proven to be false. Now, what, what people have corrected that version of it and said, well, no, he was just talking about George Papadopoulos in London. Then you find out that Glenn Simpson wouldn't answer any questions as to whether he was pushing this dossier to the media. He kept stepping back. He wouldn't answer it. Then we find out he didn't even verify the information in the dossier. And when you look at all of this, knowing that the Hillary Clinton campaign and the DNC actually paid for this, paid for this dossier, and that the dossier itself could have been part of a ginormous, a huge, a huge disinformation came by the by by the Russians. 
I mean, it's it's let, clearly there's a problem. Professor, let, let me go to you. I, and you make some really good points as as you as it relates to the partisan aspect of all this. Now, I'm a conservative. I'm a proud conservative. I, I don't hide any of that. But we we learned a lot that the fix was in. I want to use this analogy that the fix was in. Poor Bernie Sanders and his supporters. They had no shot at all whatsoever. And even Donna Brazil admits that. Then you have Comey and Strzok. I don't believe I've ever heard of a case where you write exoneration letters months before you interview the people involved in an investigation. They didn't do the investigation, but they're writing an exoneration. And then it seems with the Russian dossier that they're trying to put the fix in there by using bought and paid for Russian propaganda, we now learn. And then you take it a step further, and that information was put before a FISA court and a warrant mm -hmm. issued. As a constitutional scholar, I hope you are as afraid as I am about these issues, about the, the corrupt nature of all of this and, the con and our constitutional rights in jeopardy here. I am very much worried about that. That's why I called for, right from the beginning, an impartial, nonpartisan commission of inquiry to look into every aspect of the last election, every aspect, Agreed. what the Russians try to do in terms of the Democrats, what the Russians try to do in terms of the Republicans. This is a bipartisan issue. Every American suffers when the Russians in any way try to influence the election. Look, I don't think the, the Russians try to influence the election necessarily in favor of one candidate or the other. I think they try to influence the election in terms of destabilizing the American political system. And that's why having partisan inquiries by congressional committees doesn't work. That's why having a special counsel who operates behind closed doors doesn't work. We need an open investigation commission. This is too important to all Americans to leave to any kind of partisan advantage. Let me let me follow up with the dossier. We, it was partisan, bought and paid for. Remember, Christopher Steele didn't come on board with Fusion until Hillary and the DNC were paying for it. But that dossier used to obtain, at least in part, maybe significantly, as Sarah's reporting, to get a FISA warrant on a opposition candidate and a president elect. Mm -hmm. Seems like a, Look. a Fourth Amendment crisis here in many ways. Well, I think it would be a Fourth Amendment violation if the material in the FISA warrant were known to be false. Now, under a case called Franks versus Maryland, it's not enough under the Fourth Amendment for it to be wrong. It has to be known to be wrong. And so, again, this should be looked into. Every fact should be investigated. Mm -hmm. Nobody should be afraid of the truth. Let the truth come out. Let we'll the American public society. decide. But can I say one more thing? I have yes, to sir. tell you, just one more thing. I know it's not on topic, but, you know, as the grandchild of uh, American immigrants who came from a very, very poor country in Europe, I hope the president will apologize for whatever he said that demeans immigrants. The Statue of Liberty says, give us your poor, your hungry, people yearning to be free. We are a country of immigrants, and I just hope we can elevate the discussion about immigration and try not to insult people from any part of the world. And the president can do a great service if he just comes forward and he says, He did admit today that he used tough language, but he d denied what, what Durbin, we're going to get into this later in the show, but he denied what Durbin said, uh, Sonny Perdue. Right. And uh, another senator in the room said they didn't hear it, but doesn't mean it wasn't said. Doesn't We're ma get that's to much that. matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't much matter what words he used. I think Understood. the thrust was a thrust against certain countries, and we just can't have that kind of attitude. It makes us look very bad in the world, and it really undercuts what our Statue of Liberty has long stood for. Sarah, I am, uh, before I get to Tom, I'm not trying to keep you out of here, Tom, <laughs> but I want to just follow up on something that, that Professor Dershowitz was saying. I have one source, I don't have two, that actually told me that there was one confirmation as it relates to the dossier, and I was given a name, and it happens to be somebody that is a corrupt individual inside the Clinton circles, and you know, I can tell by your face, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I know exactly who you're talking about, and if that does come to fruition if if we find out then the court may have been lied to then the court may have been lied to and then what mm -hmm. alan dershowitz said would definitely take significance tom tell us what mm -hmm. judicial watch is doing well you know i, I think there's going to be as sarah's indicating a tsunami of information coming out on all of these scandals we have the court ruling 
uh, that the Clinton emails need to be released more quickly. So we're going to get all these Clinton emails that she tried to hide or delete. These were the ones deleted, some, and we haven't seen any of them yet. Yeah, that looks like they so may all probably be about new. yoga, wedding, a funeral, and or, or as we found emailing on the, Bill, who doesn't email. Or we found on the Wiener laptop classified information and pay to play, which I guarantee is going to be coming out. And then we had the court uh, just uh, yesterday uh, talk about how he wants the Comey memos because he wants to review the Comey memos, which are the genesis of the Mueller operation. There would be no Mueller mm -hmm. special prosecutor but for the leaking of Comey uh, to the New York Times on one specific memo. So that material may you be know. coming out. It's all, it's all building, and there are text messages that are coming out. And as, as Ed is talking about, now we're going to find out more details about the FISA or the, uh, the, uh, the intelligence surveillance abuses. Now, you know, well, my concern is that why way. are we waiting so to find important. out about them after the reauthorization occurs? I would suggest we find out about the abuses before they reauthorize this for another six well, years. Well, this is such Absolutely. a good point because Devin Nunes, well, you know, I'll let you report on, on this, but... Well, yeah, no, no, I mean, of course, yeah, Devin Nunes is going to, after, after they rule on the FISA, Act, which are probably is going to pass, is going to disclose what actually He's these extensive abuses. Extensive abuse. Yeah, in the Department of Justice and with the FBI. And I got to tell you this this is coming from people within the intelligence community. This system has been abused. It has been abu abused viciously. And we know from what we've seen, right? We know from what we've seen that there needs to be an investigation. But let's do it before. Let's let, do it. Let, just, let me just quote for the professor. For just, professor Dershowitz, uh, yeah. what, the, what Devin Nunes is saying, that there is clear evidence of massive abuse of government surveillance by the FBI and Department of Justice officials. I don't, I don't, Look, I'm a civil been, libertarian first and foremost, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, we civil libertarians, uh, liberals and conservatives alike, have long worried about the FBI, its surveillance methods, and the potential for abuse. Remember, Comey not only leaked, he laundered the information through a Columbia law professor. He didn't have the courage to stand up in front of a TV camera and say, this is information that I'm going to give you because I want a special counsel to be appointed. He laundered it through a Columbia professor. These are issues that you should know. be investigated. We have to know what surveillance is being used against Americans. And whether you're a conservative or a liberal or a Republican or a Democrat, you Doesn't should matter. care deeply about any abuse of this process. If you believe in the Constitution and our constitutional rights. Nobody should disagree with that. Last word, Tom. Hillary Clinton and her top campaign aides need to be brought in at least by Congress to testify about what they knew and when about this dossier. Glenn Simpson refused to talk about whether the Clinton campaign, his paymaster, what his, their involvement was in directing Chris Steele's use of Russian intelligence to gather information. A lot of news coming next week? Oh, a lot of news coming next week, Sean. A lot. All right. Stay with this program. Uh, you won't get it in the rest of the media. When we come back, Ed Henry is here with the latest reaction to President Trump's remarks. Also, comments made by Nancy Pelosi disparaging male colleagues. A lot of news tonight. Stay with us. So there is a lot of drama right here in Washington, D.C., the sewer, the swamp over comments that President Trump made on immigration reform. And also there's controversy surrounding remarks made by Nancy Pelosi that the media, well, they won't talk about that. Here with some insight into all of this, Fox News chief national correspondent. Uh, good to see you, Ed Henry. Good to see you, Sean. And Republican Senator Tim Scott is saying that his South Carolina colleague who was in the room with the president, Lindsey Graham, told him that President Trump said some version of what has been reported about that blank hole uh, comment related to immigration. Last night when this broke and I came on your show, White House aides were not denying it was said. But two other Republicans today who were in that meeting, Senators Perdue and Cotton, said they do not recall the conversation playing out that way. And the president himself, who knows what he said or didn't say, tweeted, quote, the language used by me at the DACA meeting was tough, but this was not the language used. What was really tough was the outlandish proposal made, a big setback for DACA. He added, never said anything derogatory about Haitians other than Haiti is obviously a very poor and troubled country. Never said, quote, take them out, made up by Dems. I have a one wonderful relationship with Haitians, probably should record future meetings. Unfortunately, no trust. Now, as the president held an event at the White House today to commemorate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, 
Various pundits and anchors at places like CNN flat out called him racist, while various officials inside foreign governments, ranging from Haiti to South Africa, also attacked the president. But that may play right into what White House officials told us last night, that the president's more concerned about border security here at home and protecting Americans than what foreign governments have to say about his policies. The bigger question for the president's agenda is whether this episode makes it even harder for him to accomplish the already tough battle of getting the wall along the southern border included as part of a deal on DACA. As Republican Speaker Paul Ryan today said these comments were unhelpful, and Senator Dick Durbin, a key leader in terms of rounding up Democratic votes, flatly claimed the president said it. Whether you're coming from Haiti, we've got great friends from Africa in Janesville uh, who are doctors who are just incredible citizens. And uh, I just think it's important that we celebrate that. And then he went on when we started to describe the immigration from Africa that was being protected in this uh, bipartisan measure. That's when he used these vile and vulgar comments. Durbin and other Democrats not expressing much outrage, though, about controversial comments about immigration from House Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi. She said the immigration talks are led by, quote, five white guys, which sounds like the five guys fast food chain. The five white guys, I call them, you know. Um, <laughs> I said, are you going to open a hamburger stand next or what? Well, one of those white guys is Pelosi's number two in the Democratic leadership, Congressman Stanley Hoyer. He rebuked her. He said it was offensive. A sign this already volatile debate is getting inflamed, Sean. All right, Ed Henry, thanks so much. Uh, we're gonna, you're going to stay with us. We also bring in former White House press secretary and Fox News contributor Ari Fleischer. Uh, Ari, you were commenting on this last night. Now, I'm just asking as an irredeemable, deplorable human being that clings to God's, my Bible, I believe in the Second Amendment, and my religion. Um, a lot of things are said in politics, but what do you make of the conflicting views? How do you, where do you come down on it? Well, here's where I come down, Sean. I, I believe in addition. I believe in being inclusive. I believe in welcoming people to this country and that we should get the votes of Hispanics, African Americans. It doesn't matter who you are because our ideas are the best and we can help lift people up. But if you're a Hispanic, if you're African American, you hear the president talk like that, you wonder if he cares about you. And that's the problem with words like that from the president. He might be speaking, you know, from the gut, you know, the kinds of things people say privately. He lets it rip on occasion, and sometimes it's helping it to be politically incorrect. Other times it pushes people away, and, and I can understand that. That's why I've said that what the president did I thought was hurtful. I wish he hadn't said it, Sean. I said that yesterday. I still think that tonight. You know, he, as you were saying in your report that he admits he used tough language. Let me move on, yeah. because this really all comes down to the immigration debate. It mm -hmm. seems like chain migration will end as part of this. It seems mm -hmm. um, inarticulate, not whoever said what. Well, we'll let the, the Washington people figure it all out. But he's talking about a merit-based system from what I understood, yeah. the way I understood it. At least it. the debate is shifting that way. The wall seems non-negotiable for the president. And DACA seems to be a part of the deal if the wall is included. Yes, but I mean, one of the problems with the negotiations that the president referred to in his tweet is that this started out, what, how do you define DACA? It started out as the children of illegal immigrants brought here through no fault of their own should stay here. The current state of negotiations has changed. It's those children plus their parents who came over here illegally and knowingly so, not the infants, not the kids, they will get some sort of legal status as well. To be clear, they're not going to become citizens overnight. This is not an amnesty per se. However, they will get some legal status. Yeah. That's not where this started, Sean, and that's going to upset the president and others who support him. Ari, I, I make this point often. You, you always get the spending increases. You never get the tax cut. You can go back to 86 in the Reagan deal. You always get the consideration, the amnesty. You never get the wall built. And, and interestingly, uh, and I played it the last couple of nights. All the Democrats sounded like Donald Trump only five years ago. Yeah. What's different now is that you have Donald Trump running the government for at least the next three years. So if Congress does appropriate funds for the wall, the wall will be built. You'd have to believe that Donald Trump won't build the wall if he's given the funds. So that's the key. The so he's got to be given. This is important. The money, the money he's is there. Be the given... rest is up to Donald Trump and his administration. He's got to be given the money as part of any deal, or he's making a mistake. And I would, I would think, show me the money, to quote a famous film. And look, and, and you know I'm a, I'm a for immigration reform Republican. I 100% agree with what you just said. 
You've got to get the money for the wall. I would not vote for a deal for DACA without funding for the wall. The two should be tied because Republicans are 100 percent right. We'll be doing DACA 2.0 in two years if we don't have better border security, and that includes a wall. It could also include mm -hmm. sensors and drones and more border patrol agents, but a wall works, and a wall should be part of it. Walls should be built first. Ed? Uh, no doubt about it that that's something the president's demanding. But the Democrats like Dick Durbin have simply not, you know, given an inch on that. And they, when you, I talked to a White House official in the last 24 hours who was saying that their frustration with the president's comments, they don't believe he's a racist, but they said, look, we were getting momentum here in these immigration talks, and this may stall it. This may take it into, you know, the back and forth about the president's personal views. Instead don't you of think the, the Democrats substance. want DACA so bad? They do, but they think that they can get DACA five, without the wall. But, but they might be wrong. Five years ago, they wanted, they were, wanted 700 miles of border fence. They did. You had Dianne Feinstein on camera in California Chuck saying, saying that uh, they're, they're taking away our Medicaid benefits. They're flooding the city. I mean, Democrats said this, many of the same things as president saying now. Now they call him racist. Back then, somehow, they were right. Ari. Uh, I, I agree with that take, and this is one of the reasons Washington doesn't work. People take one stand and they don't keep it when the stand matters. And if ever there is a time for the Democrats to compromise, it's now. Because Donald Trump means it when he says he will start deporting people. Look, President Obama broke the law when he allowed DACA to take place. He did not have the presidential authority to do it. So what Donald Trump's going to do is enforce the law. The law is on the books. If the Democrats want to change the law, they need to compromise. All right, guys. Good to see you both. Appreciate you. it. A lot more coming up in this busy breaking news night. President Obama taking yet more swipes at the Fox News Channel. Newt Gingrich, he'll react as we continue from our nation's capital, the special edition of Hamilton. Live from America's News Headquarters, I'm Trace Gallagher. Russian hackers may be targeting the U.S. Senate. A cybersecurity firm says the group known as the Fancy Bear has been laying the groundwork for an espionage campaign over the past several months. The government-backed hackers have been linked to Russian meddling in the 2016 presidential election. A researcher with Trend Micro Inc. found a batch of suspicious-looking websites. They resemble the Senate's internal email system. So far, the Senate is not commenting on that report. President Trump's White House doctor says he is in excellent health. Early today, the president was at Walter Reed Medical Military Hospital for his first medical checkup since taking office. Dr. Ronnie Jackson says in a statement that the exam went, quote, exceptionally well. Jackson says he's looking forward to providing additional details on Tuesday. I'm Trace Gallagher. Now back to Hannity. All right, well, yes, he's at it again. President Obama, he's been out of office almost a year, but in an interview on David Letterman's new Netflix show, well, the former president, he can't get over it. Again, taking swipes at Fox News. Watch this. What the Russians exploited, but it was already here, is we are operating in completely different information universes. If you watch Fox News, you are living on a different planet <laughs> than you are if you, you know, listen to NPR. He's still kind of stuck there. Let's take a walk down memory lane. This is not the first time Obama's taken shots at Fox News or yours truly. You may remember some of this. I'll put, I'll put Mr. Burgess up against uh, Sean Hannity. He'll tear him up. I mean, look, um, is, is Sean Hannity suddenly going to get on the airwaves and say, you know, I was wrong about this Obama guy. He's, he's my man. No, that's not going to happen. I think that there's a certain segment uh, of hardcore Sean Hannity fans that probably wouldn't want to go have a beer with me. There's no doubt about that. With respect to Sean Hannity, I, I didn't know that he had invited me for a beer. His opinion of me does not seem to be very high. But... Uh, but I'm always good for a beer. The History Channel is not here. I guess they were embarrassed about the whole Obama is a devil thing. <laughs> of course, that never kept Fox News from showing up. Good, affordable health care might seem like a fanged threat to the freedom of the American people on Fox News. It turns out it's working pretty well in the real world. If you watch Fox News, on a regular basis, 
it is a constant menu. They will find like folks who make me mad. I don't know where they find them. I wasn't viewed through this prism of Fox News and conservative media and uh, making me scary. And I haven't, you know, turned on Fox News or listened to conservative talk radio yet today, but I've turned them on enough over these past seven and a half years to know I'm not exaggerating in terms of their story. Look, if I watched Fox News, I wouldn't vote for me either, right? right? Because, you know, you've got this screen, this funhouse mirror through which uh, people are receiving information. Those who watch Fox News and those who read the New York Times occupy completely different realities. I mean, if, if I watched Fox News, I wouldn't vote for me. I didn't vote for you either. Anyway, here with reaction, the author of the best-selling book, Vengeance, former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich. It, the, uh, you're laughing. I'm laughing, too. I forgot, I, I forgot the good old days. There is some truth in what he's saying in this regard. I think we have a series of scandals, and looking at Devin Nunes today, that the abuse of government surveillance by the FBI is so bad and all that we're uncovering here is so bad, he's right. The mainstream media, you know, they just, they want to destroy Trump and they loved him. It's that simple. Look, you and I know each other a long time. So I'm going to spend some of your money. Why don't you offer $100,000 to create the Barack Obama Fox News, Sean Hannity scholarship, if he will come on the show with you. That is Done. such a funny, look, that's such a Done. funny segment. Well, I'm just telling you, I, I, I listened to it and I thought to myself, this guy is so whacked. And <laughs> he he, 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 today, I mean, he still doesn't get it. It's he just, doesn't. And, and he, I'll never get it. Look. <clears throat> Many, many years from now, in a nursing home or a nice retirement community, Barack Obama will be still living in a fantasy life. He'll think that Iran should, really wanted to have a deal. He'll think that high taxes really work. He'll think that welfare is a good deal. I mean, what you just put together is, as I think, funny, a statement of who Barack Obama is as I've ever seen. Uh, and it captures this, this sense of being out of touch with reality. Let's talk about the media in this sense. They've spent a year, Mr. Speaker. There's no evidence of Trump-Russia collusion. We, we play the montage of Democrats saying there's no evidence of collusion. And yet we do have evidence of unbelievable instance of abusing the weapons of intelligence and surveilling, unmasking, and leaking raw intelligence. We know that the fix was in with Hillary and Bernie. We know that the fix was in Comey and Strzok, rigged, they had an exoneration before even an investigation. We know that Hillary paid for a dossier full of Russian propaganda. We know that dossier now was used to get FISA warrants to spy on an opposition candidate and a president-elect and his team. And I'm not even talking about Uranium One or Debbie Wasserman Schultz. There seems to be, there are two realities here. And the media has chosen a reality of, of partisanship and conspiracy theories. Either that or I'm, I'm wrong. But they didn't think Trump could win, and people like you and me were right. Look, what, what you have to understand, and I'm, I'm actually working on a book uh, called Trump's America, trying to explain this because it's so, it is so, unbelievably hard to understand if you're a normal person. Over here is a left-wing corrupt establishment which sincerely sees this entire fight as a function of identity politics in which if they lose, they will disappear. Over here are the rest of us who are thinking, you know, a lot of these ideas are really weird. I mean. Obama thought if you gave $100 billion to Iran, they'd be nice people. Obama thought it was terrific that we had more people on food stamps than ever before. You can go down a whole list of these things. And this is 
really a definition of life and death. And so what you and I are living through is a period where the old order, the establishment that inherited, and then this is important to understand, they inherited Walter Cronkite, they inherited Edward Murrow, they inherited the old Harvard, I mean, they inherited all these great centers of authority and responsibility, and they have gradually turned them into left-wing nutcake positions. And so the truth is we're in an identity fight in which if we win, they disappear. If they win, we disappear. That's why what you and I experience, because we're, we're great friends, we're great warriors in the same cause, and we both understand <clears throat> if we lose, we will literally disappear. On the other hand, if we win, America will continue to move forward as the freest country in the world. Why? And I think that's why both of us fight. That's the, I, you're describing it perfectly, to be honest, or at least nobody, I think, really wants to know what truly motivates us, but that's a separate issue. But as a practical matter, I, I, can, I can shoot off a litany of Obama statistics and what his true record is on the economy. You mentioned Iran. You think he can bribe murdering thug dictators and, you know, not mention radical Islamic terrorism. And then in a year of Trump, you can compare policy significant changes with tangible results, but the media won't talk about any of it. Look, you would think if Barack Obama was a sincere person who genuinely cared about African Americans, when you got a report this week that we have the lowest black unemployment in years because the economy is starting to work. Trump's cut tax cuts, regulatory cuts, pro-business attitude is starting to work. You'd think that having the lowest black employment, lower than any time under Barack Obama, that Obama would say, this is great. He can't afford to believe it. Yeah. Now, Nancy Pelosi can't afford to believe it. Chuck Schumer can't afford to believe it, because if it was true, they would disappear. Mr. Speaker, we always appreciate you being with us. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. And when we come back on the special edition of Hannity, Nancy Pelosi believes giving thousands of dollars to you, the American people's only crumbs. Really? We'll explain. All right, in December, under President Trump's leadership, a sweeping new tax reform bill was passed, and the American economy is now booming. Stock market again at an all-time high, and just yesterday, Walmart announced that many of its employees are going to receive a $1,000 bonus, making Walmart the latest American company to give bonuses to its employees in the wake of the tax reform bill. But Democratic House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi wants you to know that these bonuses amount to a little more than crumbs. What's this? In terms of the bonus that corporate America received versus the crumbs that they are giving to workers to kind of put the schmooze on is so pathetic. It's so pathetic. Really? Thousand dollars? I'll take a thousand bucks. Now, this arrogant dismissal of the surging economy is nothing new for Democrats. And liberal lawmakers have been spreading the doom and gloom message about Trump's economic strategy for months. But they've been wrong. Watch this. Under this plan, the wealthiest Americans and wealthiest corporations make out like bandits, while middle class Americans are left holding the bag. This is Armageddon. Uh, this is a very big deal because you know why? There's really a very hard way to come back from this. They're going to explode the debt. They're going to raise taxes right. on hardworking families. Because the federal treasury is being looted tonight in order to give tax breaks to billionaires and to large profitable corporations. They're going to cut programs for the elderly, the children, the working families of this country, and the poor. Yes, they want to poison the air, water, and kill children. Here with reaction, White House Senior Advisor for Strategic Communication, Mercedes Slab. Obama was the only president in history that never reached 3% GDP. 
we had 13 million more Americans on food stamps, 8 million more in poverty, lowest labor participation since the 70s, the worst recovery since the 40s, lowest home ownership rate since in 51 years, and he doubled the debt. Really? Lowest unemployment rate for African Americans, for Hispanics. I mean, the numbers go on and on. There is a renewed. A year. What renewed, happened? It's a renewed optimism in America, and that is because of the leadership of President Trump. I mean, it was very clear that he made that commitment to the American people, that he was going to focus on the economy, focus on the American worker, make sure that they had an opportunity to succeed, and that is now happening. We have two million fewer people on food stamps. When you, when you everything's broken down by by demographics right african americans are doing better in the last year than they did under how many years under obama right uh, the same with the economy same with consumer confidence same with uh, home ownership rates i mean and just let's just look at uh, Nancy Pelosi, I call her Negative Nancy, and the demoralizing <laughs> oh, Democrats. You've been in the White House how many weeks? <laughs> now you got a nickname for everybody? <laughs> well, I have a great mentor, the president. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, clearly, the, the Negative Nancy here, I mean, she's calling this like these are crumbs, a thousand dollars. I mean, for and American how rich is families, Negative Nancy? Let, well, it just shows how out of touch uh, Negative Nancy is from the American people. Wait, and this didn't is we something pay for that, her Gulf Stream to go to San Francisco and back when she was speaker? Uh, I, I, yes, and it, to just to say that for 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 her and for the Democrats to basically say we want to take away these tax cuts from the American people that these American American hardworking families don't deserve these tax cuts because guess what they think government is a better answer that is not what President so, Trump did he stood away from that and basically said no so I'm the first week with of the February people. that's what he's done and even CBS I don't know if you saw when they when they got three American families. Yes. We're all getting a significant tax yes. cut. We played that. Um, so starting in the first week of February, people will see more money in their paychecks. That's right. The Department of Treasury just announced the withholding tables, and it clearly shows the benefits that you're going to see 90 percent of Americans who are going to benefit from this tax cut. By the way, I'm not one of them. <laughs> I live well, in sorry. New York, a high-tax state. <laughs> but, but you know,